What's up everybody, JJ here, and today we're going to be using a little bit of 3D printing and some other materials to create a model of the James Webb Space Telescope's mirrors. Now the James Webb Space Telescope, if you haven't heard, it's the biggest space telescope humanity has ever launched into space. It's going to be able to see things a hundred times fainter than the Hubble Space Telescope was ever able to see. It really is an amazing thing and a great culmination of science and technology and engineering all coming together. Almost every single part of this telescope is so cool. I will link a more in-depth video that covers it, but I will go into a little bit of detail about the mirror since we are building it here. It uses 18 of these hexagonal mirrors, much larger than these, but the reason they're using all these little mirrors to combine to create a big mirror is because the mirror is so big it couldn't fit on a rocket, so it needed to be deployed in space and all the mirrors have to be going through calibration. The real mirrors are 13 times taller than these, so this will be a very scale model representation of it. And the real space telescope will stay 940,000 miles away from Earth. That's like four times farther than the moon is. But luckily this one doesn't need to stay at a Lagrange point, it can stay right in your house and we're gonna build it today. This model will be a mixed media art piece to sort of make up for some of the limitations of 3D printing. 3D printing is great at precision, so that's why all the holders will be 3D printed, but mirrors are way cheaper to just buy and not try to 3D print a mirror. And the other limitation of size, that's why we're using this backer board. We're gonna glue everything to this and it will hold everything together. So these mirrors I bought off of Amazon, I will link the one I bought down below, but you can buy anything that will be a similar size. And you probably wanna go with the cheapest ones possible. These are nice and flexible. They're almost just like a mirror sticker. Glass would be way heavier and way more difficult. These, I'm just gonna use the adhesive on the back because they're so lightweight. If these were glass, you really don't want them falling off, so then I would probably use some super glue in that case. And this backer board is just a cheap one I picked up at a local hardware store. You just want something large, thin, lightweight, and cheap. But any sort of thin MDF thing that'll hold it all together should be fine. Now the last part of the installation will be deciding what glues you wanna use. I already mentioned for these mirrors, I'm just gonna use the adhesive that's already on the back. And for attaching the 3D printed plastic parts to the backer board, I'm just gonna be using some hot glue. There's several different options you could use in this case. You could try something stronger like super glue. You could try some strong adhesive tapes in this case. I did wanna mention I'm not the original creator of these designs and I will link the original creator in the description down below. All credit goes to him. He created these great little models and I really liked using them. I printed these in a black PLA because I kind of like the whole black and gold look, but really you could print these in any color and just kind of make it your own. They're nice and easy to print. Unfortunately, I did have to print each one individually since I couldn't cram two on the bed of the Anycubic Mega S. And I printed them with two outer walls and I think three top and three bottom layers with just a grid infill in there. So it's not too much plastic. And I would recommend printing a single one of these and make sure your mirror fits before you go through and print all of these to make sure things fit. You can easily scale these up or down in your slicer to make a snugger fit. With these that I bought, they worked in 100% size. So now let's lay out all these pieces on the backer board, get it marked, and then we can take it outside to go cut it. So this is gonna be one of the easiest cuts you can ever do. I just want it inset enough that you can't see it from the outside and far enough out so that each of these pieces get coverage on the backer board. So I already sort of lined up this with the edge here. slide these off to see the general line we've drawn. Nice and easy. So for saws, there are several different options here. You could use a hand saw, a jig saw, circular saw, sawzall. Most saws would work here because we're just cutting some straight lines. So whatever you have, you should be able to get this done. So now that we have this cut out, there's two sides to it. One is textured, the other is shiny and reflective. This one's nice and smooth, so we don't wanna use this. The glue will stick better to the textured side. So in this case, we're gonna use the textured side. So now we can just start lining things up and then we'll hot glue it all together. So now that it's basically laid out, I think I'm just gonna to have to pick a corner and start going with it. 
And then once you have one down, just make sure the next ones are lined up well with it. And then that's kind of the pattern. We're just gonna follow all the way around. So now for our moment of truth, I think the hot glue has dried now and we can see if it all holds up when I pick it up. And there we go. It's here, upright, and really lightweight. That's another nice part of it. It's really not too heavy. So while this was drying, I was thinking about mounting solutions and I'm thinking I'm gonna put a screw through one of these and straight into a stud in the wall and then I'll put the mirrors on afterwards. That way it will lay nice and flat against the wall. And if I ever need to replace it, I can just take out that single mirror. And luckily this pack came with 24, but I only need 18 of them. So I will have some spares if I ever need to move it. I can peel that mirror out of there and if it gets destroyed, I've got spares. Then just unscrew it and screw it somewhere else. So I think I've found where I want this installed. So let's go mount this to the wall. So here's our extremely boring wall that we're about to turn into a super cool wall. And I've already got the place marked, so we're ready to start install. So a vertical mount like this is how the space telescope works, so that's how we're gonna mount it here. And since I only used a single screw here, I can still use a level to make sure that everything is nice and level before I fully tighten that down. That's looking good. So now we can fully tighten it down. There we go. Nice and flush. Now it's time for mirrors. And there we go. These still have their protective coatings on there, but it already looks so good. And honestly, if you didn't want to go for that high shimmer look, this is a nice look without being a full mirror, but that's not how we're gonna go. We're gonna go full mirror on this one, so let's go for it. So here we are one week later, and as you can see, one of them has fallen off, so we're gonna need to repair that one right now. And to reattach this tile, I'm just gonna be using a little piece of dual-sided foam scotch tape, place it just right on the back, remove the adhesive backing, and then we just squeeze it in right there. So there you have it. Pretty easy to fix if one of them ever does fall off, but now after, that's the second time this one has fallen off, so if I was to redo this project all over again, I probably would add a little dot of super glue under all of them or just some adhesive down there. Again, I wouldn't use hot glue on the tiles since they're just thin plastic and that heat would probably create some warping and distortions which you can really see. That is one downside to how I mounted them, I guess. They're not perfectly level, and since they're a bunch of mirrors, you can really see all this distortion in my face. It's not very useful as a mirror, but it is a good looking art piece on the wall. But in the previous week since I built this, they have released the first images from the James Webb Space Telescope. They're just kind of calibration images so far, but the first one is so cool. It's sort of a selfie. They put a separate camera on the telescope that's taking a picture of the mirror segment. All the panels are dark, except for one of them is bright because it's catching the light from a star. And I think it might be the one that has fallen off for me. And so that shows how all the tiles are doing their calibration. The next images they've sent back have been calibration images where they're taking all 18 mirrors are taking a picture of the same star, but it looks like 18 different stars because they're not perfectly aligned. And the next image is after the next stage of calibration, they aligned that same star into this same hex pattern that the mirrors are laid out in. And I'm pretty sure in the next couple steps of calibration, they will start to bring those 18 images of the same star together into a single image of that star. That's definitely an oversimplification of how space telescopes are calibrated, but so cool to be able to watch it in real time and have my own right here. I love looking at this up on the wall. And as you can see, this wall was pretty blank before, so I'm so glad that I have a nice, nerdy pop of fun here on the wall. I would recommend this project for anyone who's into space and science, things like that, and want to do a fun big 
wall art project. It really was a pretty simple project that turned out really nice. And it was really fun to build this while learning about the James Webb Space Telescope. Let me know in the comments down below if you have any questions about this project. I will link all the equipment I used in the description down below. And if you stuck this far through the video, hitting that like and subscribe button down below really helps me out, helps this channel keep growing. And if you create this project as well, I'd love to hear from you. But anyway, go out there and create something amazing today, and I'll see you in the next one.